Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning back here again for another video. This is Son of Liberty. So if you guys have stumbled across this video by mistake and you wish to watch part one or any previous chapter, I'll include a link in the video description down below. Now, if you are here because you've already watched part one, I hope that there is more information beneficial to your mental toolbox in part two as well as part three. Enjoy the videos. So, um, let's talk about the J term, for example. What do you think, uh, you guys seen the movies where people do J-turns? How does that, what's a, what's, a, what's a good movie that there's a lot of J-turn stuff in? I've seen it done many times. Born, I did. Born, 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 Born. Jason Bourne, where he's in tight alleyways trying to break contact. Um, I've actually used a J-turn in real life uh, twice. Once in Afghanistan and once in Yemen when I was breaking contact off the X when somebody was shooting at us. And I did it in a land cruiser. And I hit a car, uh, swinging the front end around. That's okay. I live with it because we live. We got home safe. Let's talk about J turn and, and its use. Let's say you are coming up on a blockaded position and you have nowhere to go. People think a J turn is a three point turn or a J and then maneuver. No. A J turn is using the momentum of the vehicle to get the front end of the car around while continuing to move and not slowing myself down. Okay? So the, the idea is I'm using speed, momentum to break contact. Um, as opposed to a slow roll, Austin Powers, and then roll it out. Okay, so here's, here's partly how it works. So I have the front and rear wheel on the board. Now, when you punch the accelerator, what, what happens to the transfer of energy? Where does the energy go? Where does the energy go? The drive shaft. Yes. Which, so, which axle does it load? Front and rear. I'm going to reverse. Think about it. I'm reverse and I punch the gas. What happens to the vehicle in a POV perspective typically when I punch the gas? Guys, it dies. The front end dies. So I'm loading the front end of the vehicle, right? So as I load the front end of the vehicle, when I gas it, the front end dies. What happens as you continue to move and accelerate across a plane? What happens to the momentum of that energy? Where does it settle? In the center of the vehicle? Typically in the center. I mean, it, there's a lot of physics that's, that's involved. Uh, but yeah, it will punch, it will transfer to the front end. And then as you maintain momentum and speed, it will level, it will plane. But what's a, a variable to take into consideration is where the drivetrain is loaded in the axle. So if I'm loading the front end of the vehicle on a front wheel drive vehicle, what am I loading, Doc? What axle am I loading? Front wheel drive vehicle. Yeah, the front, the front of the drivetrain, right? Because that's where the torque and the power is being loaded by the axle and that energy is being transferred. It's almost like, especially in a truck, the rear end is almost floating on the ground. That's a gross exaggeration, but it's light on the rear end. Because not only in a front wheel drive vehicle do you have the transfer power on the front end, but you got the engine. You got most of the weight. My Dodge Diesel. Dude, that thing, that Cummins and all the accessories on the front of that truck, that's where all the weight is. So, even if I uh, smash the gas and the front end dies, as it settles, I'm still loaded on the front end. Now, the, the reason that's important is because when I let off the gas aggressively, meaning no power, what was called power, is applied to the gas, transferring energy, what happens to typical drivetrains when that happens? In most, it's, it stops. It, 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 there's a lull, but it stops working. It's like a turbo. When you let off the turbo, it, it will spool and then just settle. So if I don't have any power applied, the, the energy on the front end actually comes off, and there's a transfer of energy to the rear end. If I do that super aggressively at the right moment, what happens is I sling the transfer of energy from the front to the rear. So stack the gas, off the gas, and that's what's going to happen. 
right? Well, the inherent problem, um, not a problem, but the inherent uh, issue here is you have a rear end on a front wheel drive vehicle that's really light. I have the engine in here. As I stab it, this is an exaggeration obviously, it goes backwards as it maintains speed and kind of planes out, and then I let it off, the front end is gonna come up. If I use that momentum of the front end transfer of energy from front to rear, and then I can get the steering wheel slung to the six to the 12, then the energy on that front end, that transfer, will allow me to load the rear end with a light front, front end and then swing the front end around. Does that make sense so far? So, again, let me explain that again. So, I stab the gas, throttle on. This is an exaggeration, I'm loading the front. I come off the gas, the transfer of energy transfers to the rear of the vehicle. I move the steering wheel from 6 to 12, moves the momentum of the front end of the vehicle up, and then back on the gas. Track it. So, off-road surfaces, um, here's the difficult. Go ahead. Is that a limitation for uh, most all-wheel drive vehicles? Yeah, I'm getting there right now. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, the terrain issues. Let's say I'm off-road, which will be in a combined off-road, on-road, which is good because you don't want to do this on a high-speed track right now. The reason I say that is because you want to do what the worst-case scenario is, because if you have a hard surface, your friend is speed. Because if I have that transfer of energy in the front wheel, rear wheel, all wheel, and it drives the front end of the vehicle up quickly, uh, on a hard surface, for example, on a high performance vehicle, this is, how, this is my data. Gas on, gas off, six to 12, here. Literally almost in that period of time because the transfer of power on a hard surface is going to give you the maximized traction to allow me to get that momentum worked up fast. For you, on a not so hard surface, front wheel drive, even worse, I'm rolling out, I get the transfer of energy, I feel the car getting speed, which is going to be an indication of momentum or the, the, the speed of the momentum, and then I transfer power. That's going to be 25, ish miles per hour at a minimum on that kind of material. I went out there and I evaluated it because you have to test it per surface to see how much distance and how, how much speed you need to drive. So if you have different terrain surfaces like dirt or gravel, what's the advantage of dirt and gravel in any real uh, drive track? Less traction. Less traction, right? I can, that's, what, that's what I find uh, fascinating about uh, rally. It's because you're riding the edge of loss of traction all the time, so it's an art of staying tuned in. So you have that momentum, that slung shot, that uh, front end. How quickly is that front end coming around? Fast. Super fast. Super fast. So I might need more speed linear, but I don't need as much aggression in the 6 to 12 to drive the front end. In fact, I did it, we did it with every car that we have, and I was going about 6 to 2, just a quick snapshot. Boom, it, it was send the front end okay. swinging around, right? With a more aggressive, uh, harder surface, you have to be aggressive, super aggressive, and you're like capping it out to drive those wheels all the way to the far left to be able to swing to the far right. Um, all wheel drive vehicles, interesting question. They do better, obviously, on less traction surfaces because you're going to have traction applied to everything. You will get a momentum shift no matter what because you're using the vehicle's weight to shift that momentum. So even in an all-wheel drive vehicle that has traction on all four tires, that's full-time all-wheel drive, even if I punch the gas, I'm gonna get a transfer to the front end, but I need more speed. Okay. And then as it's moving, if I have let gravel, I need less speed. As it's moving, I need to slingshot that vehicle around. I've been in Audis where one of the inherent issues of a lot of these vehicles is traction control. Uh, that's why they have the ability to turn it on and off because sometimes you want to, especially high performance vehicles, German engineering, you want to be able to turn that off to maximize 
the energy of the vehicle to navigate the terrain. But most of these cars, even the tourists out here with traction control will spin me around and stop me right here because everything's locking up. Anti-lock brakes, it's basically pumping uh, uh, the rotor and to, to basically make up for the traction in between and a loss or a slide. Um, so let, let's say I'm driving the wheels rolling forward and I lose traction. Well, it identifies that loss of traction and then it's pumping, it's kind of like an anti-lock brake, it's pumping that traction, um, but it's doing it in the turn on the front end of the vehicle. So it might stop me right here if that's not disengaged. Is uh, pavement the uh, weakness for all-wheel drive vehicles when it comes to basic maneuvering like this? this it is, unless you have speed. The greatest thing about all-wheel drive vehicles is that whole thing I told you about in a short period of time, if, if I have four wheels, all equal power to all four of those wheels, and I punch it, what am I getting maximized on all four wheels? Traction, right, and power. So that's why, um, you know, coming into a turn, coming out of a turn, going through a turn, all wood drives have the advantage. Quattro crushed everyone. I mean, by leaps and bounds, they changed the entire rally game, where people were going, oh shit, we, we can't even compete. I mean, it was almost unfair. And then he took Group B in a Quattro and he added a thousand horsepower to the car. Insane. Um, until people started dying. Um, so, that's the way it works. The basics of it. How is it going to work when you're in the vehicle? Well, it's, it's simple. We're going to have you come up. Uh, I'm going to demo, obviously, all the stuff. I'm going to have you set your position. There's a set position for it. Your, your, your uh, non-dominant hand or your left hand your left hand is going to be underneath the steering wheel at the 6 o'clock. You will look over your right shoulder. You'll punch the gas aggressively. And when I say aggressively, I don't mean you don't, you don't need to rear your leg up and smash it. You just punch it and accelerate. Um, out here, you can get away with it. Um, but in loose, loose gravel, you can't, right? So I might need to throttle on slowly to gain traction in the front wheel drive vehicle allow it to get some momentum, then use it. Punch in the gas. As I'm on the gas and I tell you to turn, I'm going to say off gas. You're going to remove the, the foot from the gas pedal, and at the same time you remove it, which is going to transfer that energy from front to rear, you're going to move the steering wheel from 6 to 12. It's going to instantly sling you around. The best tactic that I've seen, and I'll demo it for you, is don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Don't touch the steering wheel, don't touch anything. Why? Because when the front end goes this way and swings around, it's going to self-correct itself. The more input you get, the worse off it's going to be. So you're, what you say, once you get to 12, your hands off. Hands off. Okay. That's the best practice. Yeah. The reason that is, is because one, if your hand's in there and you catch the steering wheel, the steering wheel with your thumb, if you're driving high performance, evasion, anything, your thumb should be on top, even off-road. Uh, anybody here off-road? People break their thumbs in the steering wheel from off-road. If you hit a rock boulder and it jacks the steering wheel to the left, it will take your thumbs with it. I've seen it happen. So keep your thumbs on top and 6 to 12, pushing on, gas off, off, 6 to 12 at the same time, right after I do that, let go. Don't go. <laughs> hey, you know, let go of the steering wheel. Let it uh, correct it. So, yeah, yeah, just like this. So as it turns, what are we doing in that turn? Looking where you want to go. Yes, we're looking ahead of where we want to go. What else are we doing? Shift the shift in the drive. Shift it in the drive. Right. That's the that's the one caveat for this block of instruction that uh, when I've taught this before, um, I taught it in Iraq the last time I taught it to GRS guys, and. Everybody, for the most part, forgets to do that if, they don't, if they've never done it before. But that's okay. Because the important aspect is breaking contact. Now, imagine you have protests that surrounds a vehicle. How far am I driving that momentum of that vehicle as I move in reverse? Until I'm out of the threat, right? I might go down an entire few blocks of street until I get to an intersection to deliberately jackknife the front end of the car in the opposite direction, right? So, what you don't want to do is over speed 
and drive too much momentum. What's going to happen when I drive too much momentum? Yeah, you'll 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 over uh, you'll over uh, transfer that energy and end up here, right? So a good line for a J turn is a straight line. It, the rear end doesn't move. The only compensation is the front end of the vehicle swinging and giving me enough room. I I did a J turn in Yemen in real life in a Land Cruiser um, in an alleyway, and that's why I hit a car. Rip my front bumper off. I'm good with that. The agency paid for that. Um, but what I think I didn't do perfect because it was nighttime is I could have corrected by putting my ass in on the left side of the alley. And as I was coming around, used that momentum, shot me around, and I would have had a clean turn. You don't need a lot of space. Your car lengthwise um, and then turning it sideways is, I mean, it's another car. As long as you have another car on the right side of your vehicle as you, as you pendulum in the front end, it'll be good. Make sense? If you just skip the vehicle around and that's it, I'm good with that. That's like a good to go. The working and manipulation of putting it in the drive will come with time. It, you're, oh, see, this is really cool about this is, out of all the things that we do, this is the one thing that you can really see the difference between stress and technical skill and what they do to each other in a relationship. When you drive, when I, like when I went to Team O'Neill for uh, Rally Race Car School, which is super interesting, um, my driver would drive with no motion. Most professional drivers, I, I hung out with Kurt Busch, which is NASCAR is different, but Kurt Busch and me were talking and he drives with no emotion. They, they inherently instill that into you when you're growing up racing carts, racing, whatever. So if you input emotion, what do you think the inputs of emotion translate to in the vehicle? Stairs. Just like in a gun, it's touching the steering wheel. It's shifting at the wrong point. It's not putting enough gas. And that translates directly to you not being able to complete the maneuver. So keep emotion out of it. And the first few times that we do this, when you're getting slung, slung shot around and your eyes are this big, <laughs> Uh, you won't be so cognitive. Try to concentrate, like he said, in looking forward on a task, and then that will allow you to be more technical, and we'll work through the problem set. All right, guys. So that is going to be a wrap here on today's video review. I hope that you guys were able to find some nugget of information that you guys could uh, put in your mental toolbox for later in life. If you are new here and you are not a subscriber, I would love to earn your subscription each and every review. Please consider hitting that like button the subscribe button, leaving a comment down below. All those things are gonna help YouTube's algorithms not only help this video uh, be more successful, but it will help my channel continue to grow. As well as my subscribers, I wanna thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. So until that next video, guys, take care, be safe.